Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, I'd like to review and feature a new waveguide that I developed. It's a uh, horn or waveguide, whatever you'd like to call it, uh, number 1905. And so this is a dedicated waveguide for the Dayton Audio AMT Pro 4. And this is a larger AMT available from Parts Express um, in the United States through Dayton Audio. And so in this video I'd like to review the uh, test data and compare it directly against um, the tweeter mounted in a regular baffle and I'd also look at I'm also going to look at mounting it just open without the bezel the aluminum bezel that's included with the tweeter and then in addition to that I've also developed a waveguide that has fins now these fins go between the openings of the driver you can see here that it has these bars going across and so I wanted to see if there was an if there was an improvement with adding these uh, phase plug fins whatever you'd like to call them and so the horn uses my ES flare curvature and it's a very wide flare and so it's more providing a modest horn loading effect but more importantly it's uh, going to provide that pattern control down into the into the mid-range frequencies and so to begin the test I tested the uh, tweeter open air and so you can see here uh, this is the raw frequency response with the tweeter mounted open air and so you can see that it does have a bit of a dip and you'll see this is consistent with all my measurements at around 4.8 kilohertz so I'm not sure where this is coming from but uh, nonetheless it's there so I measured at on axis uh, 15, 30, and 45 degrees. And so I've color coded uh, these. And so I'm trying to keep it consistent with my color coding there with the blue being on axis. And then and then as you move off, off axis, it's a different color. So this just speeds up my testing rather than producing a detailed colored polar map where I have to do increments of five degrees. Uh, this is just kind of like a snapshot, tells you uh, how things are going just generally at the various off angles up to 45 and so we can still gather some very important data by doing these uh, four measurements and you can see here that the off axis actually is very consistent with the on axis however um, we we do get some narrowing there in the upper treble and down into the two kilohertz region basically the the driver is omnidirectional providing the same output regardless of your off-axis position so that's just what we would see in a colored polar map we would see that it pr produces quite a bit of uh, energy into the room in the mid-range and then we see some uh, pretty significant narrowing uh, there in the upper treble in the 10 kilohertz region so the next thing that I did was measure it uh, with the aluminum bezel mounted back onto the driver and then mounted onto a baffle. Now this would represent a typical uh, scenario which would represent what most people would do. So it's a 25 centimeter wide baffle and so you can see here that the baffle does quite, create quite a quite a number of disturbances. Uh, we can see that around two and a half kilohertz we're seeing an actual increase in output as we move. Um, actually it's the reverse so under two kilohertz, uh, we're seeing an increase in output as we move off axis. Um, things are rather congested in the seven kilohertz region, so we're getting a lot of power in that seven kilohertz, but then as soon as you move 45, it just falls like a rock. So it's a little uh, inconsistent with the on axis, and so this is indicating that there is some edge diffraction artifacts coming into play on this. So the waveguide, actually, I, I wanted to show you uh, the design just in solid work so that you can see what we're actually dealing with. So you can see here this is the design that I had come up with. I've, I've included a rear chamber just to block off the rear wave. This was required for my testing uh, simply because as I did the measurements I was getting interference and comb filtering in my frequency response as a result of the interference from the rear uh, sound projection off the tweeter and so I had to include a rear cover but it just so happens that I actually prefer the sound subjectively with the rear cover in place and so I'm going to be adding uh, this to my site available as a 3D CAD model if you want to print this 3D print this for the Dayton Audio AMT Pro 4 tweeter 
Okay, so this is the version without the fins. And if I do a section view uh, through the design, you can kind of get a sense of the horn flare geometry that I'm going with here. So, so you can see there, it starts at about a 45 degree exit angle coming off the tweeter and then it uses the ES curvature. Now, um, I've just kept it simple along the edges here just so that um, it lays flat on your 3D printing bed. Uh, or you can uh, mount this into a baffle or mount baffle mount this into an enclosure. Um, you'll see inside here, I actually have another uh, component, which is basically rear, it's a rear facing phase plug. And so what I found was that there was some uh, standing waves occurring uh, between these two sidewalls. So you can see these two sidewalls that uh, support the bar magnets that are part of the tweeter. And so by uh, allowing the sound to exit um, through these phase plugs, I found that just subjectively there was an improvement noticeably to the sound because uh, I, I do believe there is some coloration happening uh, off the back of the driver which actually is uh, being heard uh, through the front uh, radiating sound. So uh, the rear chamber, you may ask why I sized it this way. Basically I'm sizing it as large as reasonably possible so that it gives you a chance to put uh, polyfill or some sort of some sort of an absorbent material in there to fully absorb the back wave. There isn't any specific calculation uh, for the internal volume off this. Um, it's simply just a large enclosure to absorb the rear wave. So uh, there wasn't any uh, strategy there in terms of the, the internal volume on that. So now I can switch the configuration uh, to the one with fins. So the one with fins is a little wider. Um, you can see there in the drawings included in the product page, there's a PDF drawing uh, showing the dimensions for each component that's available uh, on my site. And so you can see there, it's very similar uh, except for the, uh, the, the addition of the fins. And so we're going to see uh, if there's any change in the frequency response with the addition of the fins. So let's just look at what the response, uh, what the changes are to the response there with the addition of the waveguide. And so you can see uh, one thing that becomes very clear is we get uh, pattern control down to about two kilohertz. And that's probably where you'd want to cross the tweeter on the two to three kilohertz region. Um, so you can see here that it actually provides moderate increasing gain uh, through that three or four kilohertz region. So if we go back up and we look, we can see that there is uh, a rising response when the tweeter is baffle mounted and then it's even more aggressive, uh, just open air like that. So um, I would say the uh, open air version is looking actually quite good uh, in comparison to the uh, baffle mount. However, when we add the waveguide, we're getting similar performance in terms of a smooth frequency response. There's not not very many uh, ripples there that you can see in the response. Um, so, but we do have uh, one or at 10 kilohertz on axis at least. We do have about a three or four dB peak, and so that's something that we'd want to look at if we can see if we can improve. So, um, let's look at what happens when we add the fins. And so the nice thing about the 3D printing is that we can quickly develop these prototypes and uh, evaluate them. So now you can see here with the response with the fins, we're getting very similar uh, pattern control. We're getting a more linear response. We still see that dip there, which I'm not sure again where that's coming from. But what we do see is an improvement in that 10 kilohertz region. If we look, we can see it peaking quite heavily, even that five uh, or sorry, 15 degrees off axis, we're still seeing that peak come in. Uh, but here we see that if we're listening at around 15 degrees off axis, we have a nice flat response right out to around 16 or 17 kilohertz where we see it start to roll off. So overall, um, if, if we had to make a decision here on which one was best, it clearly looks as though the uh, fins aren't uh, harming anything. And in fact, they appear to be uh, improving uh, some of the performance characteristics. So um, I did an overlay. Um, this is the uh, open air um, and then the waveguide with the fins. So we can see uh, that the green is the waveguide with the fins and then the red is the open air. And we can see that uh, it's a very similar response, but we're getting a little bit of a gain in the lower mids. And then we're dealing with that peakiness there um, at the 
10 kilohertz region. So if we look at the same uh, at 30 degrees off axis, um, we can see things actually, the waveguide version is a little flatter response there compared to the open air version. So basically we're gaining uh, performance with the addition of the waveguide and there doesn't appear to be any uh, detriment. So, um, so the, the waveguide offers a well-behaved off-axis. It provides the pattern control that we're trying to achieve, which is going to provide a more even power, power response into your room. A um, little bit mo uh, moderate gain in the low frequencies there, mid frequencies I mean, uh, which is going to help uh, lower distortion. So um, we did look at distortion, and you can see here uh, inter at an 85 dB test signal, we get really good dynamic range um, around 75 dB, which is certainly uh, well within our performance target for sound quality. Um, so increasing there to 95, uh, still uh, the noise floor remains low. A uh, little bit happening there at 3 kilohertz. Um, but uh, yeah, so subjective listening, um, this definitely uh, has an excellent sound character, very open, which is typical of the AMT technology. Um, like I mentioned earlier in the video, uh, the addition of the fins here certainly helped. And now the fins would have to be glued into place. I didn't include any way to actually secure it. Um, I believe I basically taped it in place for my prototyping, but you might want to come up with something a little more permanent so you can see it there in place. Um, so yeah, there's the, I've included the 3D CAD files on my site if you're interested in trying it out, if you have the tweeter already. Um, if not, uh, they're available uh, in North America from Parts Express. So the Dayton Audio AMT Pro 4 AMT tweeter. So uh, that's it. So um, I'll just show you here um, the product on my site. Um, there is a PDF drawing that kind of walks you through the, uh, the the drawings. Now I've shown it just as a typical system with a 10 inch two way. Um, I've chosen the 10 inch simply because it's going to have the same pattern control matching at the crossover point. 23 centimeters wide, 23 centimeters tall. Um, that's for the finned version. And so um, I'm just showing the assembly here. Now, there's nothing uh, locating the tweeter onto the back of the waveguide. What I used was the existing uh, screw holes, which actually aren't shown uh, in my model. But I just used uh, little tiny wood screws, and I screwed the tweeter to the back of the 3D printed uh, waveguide. So it was pretty straightforward there. But um, yeah, so then the rear cover has screw holes that you can use uh, wood screws into the back of the horn uh, and then just ensuring that you pilot drill uh, the plastic before putting in the wood screws. So you can see here 23 by 23. The overall depth of the, of the waveguide is 40, 40 uh, millimeters and then the fin version is 246 wide and it's the same depth. So I just have a little drawing there of the rear facing phase plug and then the rear cover which can be 3D printed as well. So um, so yeah, uh, there you have it. Uh, Waveguide 1905 for the Dayton Audio AMT Pro 4. Take care and have a great day.